So we'll continue with the chapter on arrays. And the problem that we try to solve is searching in an array. So basically what we want is to search if in an array that is not sorted, any kind of array, we have an element, a key. And linear search is the method that does that. What we can do is to iterate through the elements of the array and find the, uh, the index of the element, uh, that the first element that is equal with a key. So it's a, basically a straightforward uh, program that iterates with indices from the first position. So we have a key, here is an example. Three is equal with six is false. We increment the index to one. Three is equal with four is false. We increment the index to two. Three is equal with one is false. We increment the index. Three is equal with nine is false. We increment the index. Three is equal with seven is false, increment the index. And then three is equal with three is true. And we return the index of that element, which happens to be in this case five. So here is the method. So this is a public static method that returns an integer index, linear search, takes an integer array list and an integer key for every integer index from zero equal with zero, as long as i is less than the length of the list. If the key is equal with list of i, then we return the index i, and we increment i after each iteration if that was not the case. If we didn't return from this method for any one of the indices up to the length, and the condition becomes false, then we return minus one, saying that that element doesn't exist in the array. So here is an example. List is this array that we saw before, 6419732 and we are looking, is in this list the element three? And it returns the index five. Yes, it's at index five. Then linear search of list and minus four is minus four in that list, it's not. We reach the end of the list and we return minus one. Then linear search of list and four, we'll start from the beginning and we'll find four at index one and we return the index one. So basically linear search is just a sequential search in the list of that, that element. Now, this doesn't apply for sorted arrays. Basically it's not an efficient solution. You can do the same, but uh, usually that's not how you do it. If you are uh, an efficient machine, if you are to search for a name in the phone book, you're not going to read the entire phone book, all the names to find, to find that name. Similarly, for a dictionary, you are looking for a word in the dictionary, you're not going to read the entire dictionary to find that word. What you usually do, you try to search for that word in an efficient manner. Basically, you have a sorted array and you want to find an element in the array. Binary search compares the key with the element in the middle. So it's like opening the, the book in the middle and comparing is the key on that page. And there are three possible cases. The key is less than the middle element, in which case you discard half of the, the second half of the array and you only repeat the algorithm for the first half. So basically you discarded half of the elements at once. If the key is equal with the element in the middle, you return the index of that element because you found it. If the key is greater than the element in the middle, you discard the first half and you only search the key in the second half. And you repeat the process. You look in the middle of the remaining array if you still have to find it. And again, you either discard the first half, discard the second half, or, uh, or basically uh, find the element. Now, this is a much better algorithm. And the reason why is because instead of having a cost of how many elements are in the array, you have a logarithmic cost, log in base two of the size of the array. So let me show you how important is this. If you have, let's say 1,024 elements, okay? Which is actually two to the power 10. Uh, by comparing with the element in the middle, and seeing that is greater or less, or it is that element, you discard half of the array. So basically, let's say that it's greater than the element in the middle. 
you basically uh, look only in the second half, 512 elements. So you got rid of half of the elements. But now you repeat the same algorithm. So this is actually two to the power nine. Now, again, you compare it with the element in the middle of this array of uh, basically the array that has 512 elements. And again, realize that is greater or less than the middle element, in which case you again discard half of the remaining elements. So you are left with 256 elements, which is two to the power eight. And this is basically now you can see that at every step, you get rid of half of what was in the previous step. So here you would get to two to the power seven, and then from two to the power seven, you get to two to the power six, and so on, up to when you get to two to the power one, and one element, and you're done. So instead of doing or in linear search to find an element in an array of 1,024 would take you 1,000 comparisons in the worst case, in the average case, it will take you half of the comparisons, 500 uh, comparisons. In this case, for binary search, when the array is sorted, it takes you eight comparisons. Basically, you compare in the middle, get rid of half, compare in the middle, get rid of half, and in 10 steps, you are done. You found the element or you didn't find it. So that's, we are reducing from 1,024 comparisons to 10 comparisons, three orders of magnitude, but this is actually exponential. So it's logarithmic base two of what was the original number. So it's a great improvement, but this is only if the array is sorted, okay? So if the array is sorted, we can write an algorithm to find a key in the sorted array in logarithmic base two of the size of the array. So now the implementation. So the binary search has the same signature with linear search. Basically takes a list of integers and the key as an integer, sets two variables, low is equal with zero and high is equal with the length of the list minus one, basically the index of the first element and the index of the last element. And then we have a loop, while high is greater than low, middle index is the average of low plus high divided by two, uh, the key, if the key is less than the element at le least dot middle, then high is reduced to middle minus one. It's basically, we know that is less than the middle by transitivity is less than all of the elements greater than the middle after middle. So the high can be set to middle minus one. If the key is equal with the list of middle, then we return middle index. Else, the only other case is that the key is greater than the middle element. Therefore, the low can be reset now, assigned middle plus one. And this executes either until we return the index or high becomes lower than low, in which case uh, we exit the while loop and we return minus one minus low. A negative value telling the user that we didn't find the element, but if we would have found it, that's where it should be, okay? So here is an example. So let's say that we have this array, uh, 2, 4, 7, 10, 11, 45, 50, and so on. And we are looking for 11. So that's the key, the key is 11. So we execute the, element, the algorithm. So we look, what's the index of the element in the middle between zero and 12, uh, the low and high? It's six, 12 divided by two. So now we compare key with list of six, which is 50. 11 is less than 50. So high is equal with middle minus one. So it high becomes five, six minus one. Now we repeat the algorithm. So basically, again, what's the index of the element in the middle? The average of low, which is zero plus high is five divided by two in integer is two. So we compare 11 uh, with seven. 11 is greater than seven. So low becomes middle plus one because if 11 is after seven is after all of the numbers before seven. So low is now three because it's two plus one. The middle is now three, 
plus 5 divided by 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. The key is equal with 11. Therefore, we return 4 as the result of binary search. So it's the index of the element 11. Now let's see what happens when the key is not in the array. The key is 54, and we can see that this in this increased, increasing array, there is no 54. So again, we start from the beginning. 54 is greater than 50. So low is uh, 7, 6 plus 1. Then 54 is uh, uh, then uh, the middle between 7 and 12. 19 divided by 2 is 9. So 54 is less than 66. So high becomes 8. Now the middle, 7 plus 8 divided by 2 is 7. 7, uh, uh, 54 is less than 59. So high becomes uh, 7 minus 1, which is 6. And now we go to that case where uh, high is less than low. So we exit the while loop and we return minus 1 minus uh, low which is minus eight. It basically between, it gives us a negative value telling us that the element should have been two positions between, before the absolute value of, uh, of uh, uh, that number, which is minus eight in our case. So that's binary search. There is a method in Java, binary search, arrays.binary search, which basically does exactly this. It gives you the uh, index using this algorithm, the binary search algorithm. Now, two methods for sorting. The first method for sorting is called selection sort. So selection sort finds the minimum element, the smallest element in the list, and puts it at the beginning by swapping the first element with uh, the basically the minimum. So in this array, the minimum is one, it swaps one with two, and we got this array. We consider now that one is in the right position because it was the minimum of the array. So being at the beginning is right as being sorted. And now we want to find the minimum of the remaining array and swap it with the second position. So again, the minimum of the remaining array, nine, five, four, eight, two, six is two and we swap it with nine. So we get this array. Now we consider that one and two are sorted and we have to find the minimum of the rest of the array, which is four, swap it with the third position and we get this array where one to four is sorted. And we repeat the algorithm. Five is the minimum, so we leave it in place. Then six is the minimum, we swap it with eight. Then between eight and nine, eight is the minimum, we swap it with nine and we got the sorted array. So you always look at the rest of the elements, find the minimum and put it at the beginning by swapping it with that I element. And you continue with the rest of the array. So you do this operation step by step until you find all the, the minimums and you stop at the end. So really the way that the program works is that we iterate from zero to the length of the array, find the minimum element in the list from I to the size of the array minus one, and swap it with the list of i if necessary. We already learned how to find the smallest element in an array. First, we define a current minimum equal with the element at index i, list of i, and the index of that current minimum is i. Then we have a for loop that iterates from i plus one to the end to the length of the list. If the minimum is greater than the list of j, that means that is not a minimum. We can assign to current minimum a uh, list of J and the index of the current minimum J. So this will compute the minimum and will assign the index of that minimum in that array to the variable current minimum. So now we can only thing that we have to do is to swap it if it's necessary. If the current minimum index is different than I, then the list of current minimum index is equal with list of I and list of i is equal with current minimum. So this guarantees that it basically takes the array and sorts it. Uh, for every position, we find the minimum of the rest of the array, we put it at the beginning, then we find the minimum of the rest of the array and put it at the beginning and so on. This is selection sort. The only problem with selection sort 
is that is not very efficient is in the first case you for finding the minimum you execute n comparisons then when i is equal with one you execute n minus one comparisons and so on so you have the sum of n plus n minus one plus n minus two plus n minus three up to one and that sum is equal with n multiplied with n plus one divided by two which is quadratic it's basically uh, n squared is the dominating factor there. So for an array of a thousand elements, you would do a million comparisons. So basically it's a sorting uh, algorithm that is a little bit slow. Insertion sort is kind of similar. Basically considers that the beginning of the array is sorted. So now for every element, where is it inserted in the sorted array? So for instance, nine is in the right position because nine is greater than two, but then five must be inserted between two and nine. And that, that will be the sorted uh, insertion. Then the next element is four and that needs to be inserted after two and before five. How is this executed? Every one of these steps to insert it in the right order, we actually have a loop that iterates from the last element to the position and if the last element is less than uh, the, 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 that index in, in the loop, then uh, we, we basically swap the, uh, the element one position to the right. So basically we swap to the right all the elements up to when the element that we try to insert is greater than the next element. So here is an example. For instance, we have the sorted prefix 259 and we want to insert four in the uh, right position. So we compare it with nine and it's less than nine. So we swap nine to the next position. Then we compare it with five, it's less than five. So we swap five to the right and then it's greater than two. So we can insert four in the right position. And if you implemented this is this basically, for every position, we want to insert list of i in the sorted sublist from zero to i minus one. And for that, we basically start with the current index is equal with zero, while the current index is less than i and list of current index is less than list of i, the index is incremented with one. So basically we try to find the index, the position. Then we iterate if the current index is different than i, we iterate basically temporary is assigned list of i and in a for loop that starts from i as long as current index is less than j j is decremented with one at every step list of j is assigned list of j minus one and list of current index is assigned temp so basically what what we are doing from the end we are moving towards the beginning and we swap the elements one position to the to the left to the right and this is how it's wrapped into one method. And there is a method in the arrays which sorts any array. That's all for today. And we'll continue with uh, the rest of the lectures uh, next, uh, next week. Thank you very much.